देखिए जो गांधी जी की जो सेलिब्रेशन है जो एज ए होल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कश्मीर मना रही है और हमने ये डी एस डब्ल्यू को मैंडेट दिया है कि वो गांधी जयंती पर डिफरेंट प्रोग्राम्स ऑर्गेनाइज करे इसी सिलसिले में आज हमें यहाँ सेंटर ऑफ सेंट्रल एशियन के हाल में जो बच्चे आए हैं फ्रॉम कॉलेज फ्राम यूनिवर्सिटीज़ इनमें हमने डिफरेंट कम्पटिशन रखे हैं चाहे पेंटिंग का कम्पटिशन चाहे एसेज का कम्पटिशन चाहे स्पीच का कम्पटिशन है तो इस बारे में जो गांधी जी के तलीमत हैं उन पर ये सारा डिबेट होगा तो गांधी जी हम सब जानते हैं कि गांधी जी की जो टीचिंग्स थे टीचिंग्स है रादर तो जो हम यहाँ देख रहे हैं यहाँ लिखा हुआ है पीस इज़ द मोस्ट पावरफुल वेपन ऑफ मैन काइंड इसी तरह से गांधी जी ने दूसरा कोट है गांधी जी का कि बी द चेंज यू वांट टू सी द वर्ल्ड सो हमेशा हम ये कहते हैं कि जो चेंज होनी चाहिए वो हम दूसरे के दूसरे का इंतज़ार कर रहे हैं कि जो भी सोशल इश्यूज़ हैं सोशल प्रॉब्लम्स एज ऑन डेट हम देख रहे हैं हम हमेशा कहते हैं कि चलो फलानी करे ये करे वो करे बट गांधी जी ने हमें यही सिखाया है कि बी द चेंज यूर सेल्फ एंड चेंज द वर्ल्ड चेंज द नेशन चेंज द सोसाइटी चेंज यूर ओन डेस्टनी तो इसी के अराउंड आज हमारा जो टीचिंग सब गांधी जी है उन पर जो हम यहाँ गांधी जयंती के केजन पर ये मना रहे हैं मुझे लगता है ये बेस्ट मैसेज है टू ऑल अवर स्टूडेंट्स के नंबर फर्स्ट दो मैसेज जो आज कल हैं एज ऑन डेट है कि पीस इज जो हमने लिखा पीस इज द मोस्ट पावरफुल वेपन ऑफ मैन काइंड और इसी तरह से दूसरी मैसेज जो है बी द चेंज यू वांट टू सी द वर्ल्ड तो ये दो मैसेज एज ऑन आज के दिन बड़े इम्पॉर्टेंट हैं हमारे यूथ के लिए थैंक यू थैंक यू about this for like hours and days right seems to be very a very peaceful topic but in reality when we often claim to you know hunger for truth but we seldom like the taste when it's being served up i really want to share a masterpiece given by muhammad ali he says the face of it's also a poem just a five line poem the face of truth is open the eyes of truth are bright the lips of truth are ever closed the head of truth is upright the breast of truth stands us uh, forward the gaze of truth is straight truth neither has power of you know fair nor doubt uh, truth has patience to wait the words of truth are touching the words of truth is deep and the law of truth is simple all you sow you shall reap facts are only its shadow truth stands above all sin great be to be the battle in life truth in the end shall win i admire this piece of writing so much that you know devotion to this uh, truth is just the sole existence sole justification of our existence we don't have to do anything special you know it's just speaking the habitual reality and imagine a person who's conscious and being truthful to one self and to others obviously he's not going to you know uh, be he's not going to harm anyone he he'll ultimately have good values in him and one of the ways of being truthful is being non-violent non-violence is the personal practice of being uh, you know harmless to self and others both 
Gandhi believed that uh, truth is God and uh, vice versa, that is God is true. That's why he named the freedom struggle as uh, Satyagraha. According to Gandhi, truth and non-violence are inseparable. Non-violent resistance rejected the use of physical violence in order to achieve the political, social and economic goal. Today, millions of people are following the path of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Uh, but the thing is that I think uh, we are following it partially. Uh, what I am saying this word, these words uh, is that uh, because uh, I think truth is the most inconvenient thing in the modern world. Uh, because, uh, because we all have the tendency of accepting only the, uh, only the convenient truths. Something which is uh, inconvenient for me, I will consider it as, uh, I will not accept it as a truth, I will not consider it as truth. But the thing we need to realize is that uh, truth, uh, truth may be either convenient or it may be either inconvenient for us and we have to accept it. Uh, we've been given the topic truth, uh, nonviolence, and Gandhi, a very magnanimous and a very important topic of our times today. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to show you a picture. So, keen attention, I would request all of you to pay this. Uh, this is a picture, and I hope you might have come across this picture uh, in the recent one week. And uh, you might be also be wondering why, what made it important for me to depict this picture uh, in this uh, speech competition. This is a picture of a Ukrainian soldier. Uh, this is his picture before the war took place, and this is, uh, you know, his picture during the war. Now, the reason why am I speaking of Ukraine, Russia, Gandhi, and non-violence in, in in one single breath? Uh, it has a meaning behind. Now. Uh, uh, now, let me quote uh, Yeats here. Uh, Yeats writes in one of his brilliant poems, this, uh, The Second Coming, turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood dim tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. Now, this is uh, how the ceremony of innocence drowns, and this is where Gandhi all the more becomes relevant. And this is the time when we must take him out uh, from the phase of pre-1947, post-1947, from the pedestal of suprahuman, majestic, transcendental image that he owns in the larger Indian South Asian imagination and make him relevant to the spaces uh, that we inhibit in, in our current days. Now, why am I making uh, you know, Gandhi's importance and his idea of truth and violence and non-violence relevant? Because we live, in a, we live in the darkling plain and there are really mad armies clashing by the night and we do not know our purpose in the world. We do not have one single truth to hold on to. There are narratives upon narratives posed to us by the big brothers and the big daddies and we do not know which truth is ours, which center is ours. And, and the truth that uh, Gandhi held on to, uh, he held on to not just one truth that meant the excavation or the expulsion of the Britishers from colonial India, but his, 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 his extension was to our individual self. Of course, his aim was political, his aim was economic, but by and large, he was also a spiritual leader. And it, it sometimes sounds very oxymoronic when we state Gandhi the politician, Gandhi the spiritual leader, because in our contemporary politics, spirituality, transcendentalism and politics do not go side by side. He used his ideas of truth to solve so many problems. Nonviolence for him was not just a political tactic, but it's his spirituality and way of life. His life was a message for all of us. So speaking about truth and nonviolence, as my fellow students were talking about, but if I concentrate on the 21st century, talking about the truth and nonviolence, it really seems incongruous to talk about non-violence at a time when the world is torn absurd in violence all around. Now a situation is that every day we come across the incidents of violence. Every day we hear about the incidents of violence. When we wake up in the morning, I'll give you an example. What, what do we do? Every morning we wake up. We are fed with the staple diet of extortion, robbery, rape cases, murders, and many more. And what is the next step we do? We sip our cup of coffee or tea, have a glance at these all horror stories, and with a yawn, we turn the uh, paper of newspaper and continue our life. So it is very uh, disheartening to see that, that such a good gift of evolution, that we are supposed to be the images of uh, God on the earth, that is the human beings, we have taken these things very lightly for us in the present world. What of all from divinity? Under such circumstances, talking about uh, truth and non-violence is like water off a duck's back. Precious human lives have become dime a dozen uh, and we have become unbelievably callous regarding all the incidents of horror. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, 
popularly known as Babu, born on 2nd October 1896, was a man of millennium. He imparted in us the lessons of truth, non-violence, and peace. Truth, or may, uh, he may call it Satya, or non-violence, which is also known as Ahimsa, were the two foundations of the Gandhian philosophy. They were the two social political weapons he used in achieving him, his goals. Truth doesn't only are just mere words, they make a person sympathetic, cooperative, and also pious. Now, <clears throat> if we talk about the word truth, it is uh, well known that it is mentioned in our religion also that the importance of truth is not only that we just uh, reflect it in our words. It needs to be reflected in our actions, in our thoughts, and in our mentality as well. When talking about non-violence, Gandhiji used the term ahimsa. Ahimsa was the opposite to the word himsa, which meant injury. Ahimsa he described as love. He said a person is quite blessed if he is able to practice ahimsa even in the raging fire of himsa. Gandhiji advocated that truth stands for reality. Truth is not merely just true or false concept. It is something that, is, that defines the existence, consciousness and bliss of a person.